Hey everyone, it's Travis Michael. I'm coming at you from the job again. I'm on a rooftop unit back here. A customer gave us a call saying that none of the condenser fan motors were operating, but the compressors were running. They shut the system down to protect anything, any damage from happening, but we're gonna dig into it. I'm gonna show you what's going on with it. I'm gonna show you how we gotta fix it. And I'm also gonna give you some tips and tricks in case you can't get the parts on some things you can do to keep it running. It's supposed to be another hot day here in New Jersey. It's gonna, gonna be mid nineties. So in case the parts aren't available, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do in order to keep this machine going, to prevent any uh, further issues from happening and keep them going until we can get back and repair it. So here we are doing a service call. A customer called in and none of the condenser fan motors were running. This particular account of ours, the uh, customers are pretty handy. They come up here and check things out, see if there's anything they can take care of before we get here. Um, but you know, they just said that uh, compressors were running, but no, um, no condenser fans. So they just see here, they shut down the compressor circuit breakers just to make sure the compressor stayed off uh, they left the fan circuit breaker on but so first thing I did here was found the condenser fan fuses I checked them and they're both blown so just a quick thing I like to do to make your life a little easier uh, how to determine which fan motor is bad this unit in particular has uh, has four fan motors so sometimes I'll just take a look through the condenser fan section look at the motors and see which ones are freewheeling you know, in the wind. And sometimes if you see three moving, one not, you know, more than likely maybe that one fan motor's got some seized bearings, but um, we're gonna hop up on top of this unit and I'll give you a good look at what exactly is happening here. So you can see three of the motors are spinning in the wind. And then when we go to this one, pretty well jammed up and seized so you know that's a first obvious sign that that's the bad fan motor here so then what I did next was I just figured out what wires came from that motor I just traced them back and uh, train units are actually pretty nice with the uh, plug connections for their motors here so I unplugged it and I just owned it out with my meter I checked the I checked the ground on the other side of those fuses and before I unplugged it you know, I definitely had one motor that was short at the ground. So then I went to the next step, but here I'll show you. Yeah, hear my meter ringing out, it's reading the ground, I gotta. So that's definitely the bad one. And after I'm plugging it, checking back to the fuses, I'm no longer grounded. So I'm just gonna Put some new fuses in there. I'm gonna get the three motors going, make sure there's no other problems with this. And then I gotta to try to locate the spare motor, uh, or locate a new motor and you know get it picked up for today. It's supposed to be uh, another heat wave coming through. It's gonna be in mid nineties today in New Jersey. So definitely would like to get my customer back online and move on to the next one. So now that we identified which motor is the bad motor and in case we can't get the parts, which luckily we are able to in this circumstance, but just for demonstration purposes and also testing purposes make sure there's no other problems with it make sure I didn't need any of the parts before I go get them uh, what I'm going to show you is how to what we want to do in case you're going to leave this machine down with one bad condenser fan motor so you can see we got the four fans back here and I put some, something I had in my truck you could use a plastic bag or a garbage bag maybe some zip ties just to keep it in place uh, I've seen people use cardboard the only thing is if it rains the cardboard gets destroyed so if you have a piece of plywood something Something that you can just cover the opening because when these three other fans are running, this, this opening is going to be sucking air like crazy and it's going to be bypassing a condenser. It's going to create a high pressure situation in your condenser and the system's not going to operate right. It might even, might even shut down on the compressor. The other fans just came on. It's going to get a little noisy. But I want to show you just how much air is going to get sucked through this, this opening. I'm going to try to pull this cover off. You can see it. You can just see it's getting sucked right, right back down. So nothing there. You're gonna have nothing but problems trying to keep this machine running. You gotta cover that up with a bag, a piece of wood, something that's not gonna get deteriorated in the rain. Uh, this, like I said, just for demonstration purposes, I wouldn't leave this up here. I'd get a plastic bag, like a large garbage bag. All right. So I'm gonna start pulling out this old fan motor. I'm gonna move my piece here. It's actually my kneeling pad, dual purpose. Pull this 
fan grade off. Uh, I got a new fan blade coming. They had one in stock. General good practice, you know, you just order it up and, and if you can't get it, you can fight with this to get it off to reuse it, but I'm not gonna even bother since they had a new one. So I gotta get to the bolt that holds the belly band on, which is right there. It's like 3 8 screw head, maybe a 7 16 nut on the back. Just gonna give it a little spray WD. This video is not sponsored by WD. Specialist penetrating fast acting. Not not sponsored by them. No, oh, motor dropped. So we know it's loose. Have to grab that piece from inside put it all back together once i get the new parts luckily we had these spare fuses here so i popped two new ones in after disconnecting this uh the bad fan motor and i did turn the system on and all three other fan motors operate properly and i you know checked my voltage here right now the system's not off uh, this line is always hot and then the second line comes through off the compressor contactor. So what essentially what I'm reading on my meter here is uh, I'm just reading through the windings of the motor. So if I go across, it's not gonna read 460. It's just gonna read zero because it's the same line, same, same line at 277 there. So I'm gonna work on taking this fan blade off. Uh, like I said, we got a new one coming, but I always like to pull the fan blades off couple reasons if you're gonna scrap the uh, the motor it actually takes up less room in the truck or wherever your scrap pile is at home uh, and then also this fan blade is still intact there's nothing there's no cracks there's nothing broken so my customer has four identical rooftop units each unit has four fan motors in it so you know, you're talking across the roof at 16 fan motors if I can get this blade off maybe just leave it on site this way my customer has an extra one if something ever happens to just a fan blade or whatever it's, it's not a bad idea uh, as you can see, it's pretty well rusted on there, but I'm just going to show you a few things like I like to do to get it off. And first, we're going to start by, I got a wire wheel. I'm going to clean up, clean up the exposed shaft a little bit. I also bring up some sand cloth with me. I prefer to use the wheel. It's a little quicker on uh, wherever you can get it and then do a little closer touch up with some sand cloth. The sand cloth doesn't last as long. So that's why, like I said, I used to like, like to use the wire wheel if I can. Next, I'm gonna take these uh, set screws out. Ah, got it. I get this one to break free. Sometimes you can spray this, these two to give it a little help. That one's not too bad. So, like I said, I want to make sure I save everything, keep it all intact, and not damage it. So, I'm just gonna pull these set screws out, place them somewhere where I don't have to worry about them going missing. I'm just gonna spray it up with some WD again. Get inside the set screw holes. All right, and now we're gonna go take a break. No, nah, I'm just kidding. You could let it soak in there for a little while, but it's gonna be hot today. I don't have that kind of time. So what I'm gonna try to do, oh, you can see, look at that. I'm just gonna try to get a spin on it and work it off. So in this case, it's moving freely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap it down with my wood. I'm gonna clean this burr up, this section here with the wire wheel, and it probably will come right off. Let's see if I can spin it. So as you give it a spin and pull up, at the same time it'll get past whatever is holding it up. 
right, just like that. Look at that. You don't even need to get a new fan blade. It's just a lot of people don't want to do the work involved in pulling it off. <sighs> Had to go to the truck, get a couple things, and it took me, what, five minutes? Just got my new motor dropped off. So I'm gonna start working on putting the, uh, the new one in. System's running right now, but I'm gonna shut it down. Keep the fans from coming on while I'm up there. Now it's a good thing I pulled that fan blade off. Right before, uh, Right before we picked it up, the guy gave me a call from the supply house and told me that uh, the one that they showed in stock was damaged beyond use and repair. So we ended up we ended up not taking that one, and we're just going to utilize the one that I pulled off. So another good reason why I, I try to be careful with them and save them if they're good, because you know this stuff does happen, especially in the busy season. You know that. This inventory runs low and they don't even know what they really have. They go check it and then they can't even send it out because it's, it's no good, so. Let's see, I got the new motor here. That on last. Sometimes these can be a little pain in the ass the way these mounts work. I got the motor all mounted up. I just like to give it a check the height and you compare it with the other ones. Make sure it's in the uh, in the fan shroud pretty good. And I like to just give it a good spin. You know, you can hear it, uh, nothing's hitting. And then you go slow, and I just like to make sure my gap is very consistent all around each side. It looks pretty good. So that's all I got for you right now. Got all four condenser fan motors back on. All three compressors are running. The system's running at 100%. It's gonna need it today, man. It's getting hot out here. So I'm not sure where I'm headed next, but if I got something good, I'll be bringing another one to you. See you in the next one.